Professor Subra Suresh of MIT was appointed by President Barack Obama and took office in October 2010 as the 13th director of the U.S. National Science Foundation with an annual research budget of some $7 billion. Dr. Suresh was invited by Rector Peter Goodmanson to deliver the keynote speech at the 2011 KTH Symposium which brought together a distinguished panel of professors to discuss the role of universities in the new innovation-oriented research environment. As you'll hear in this interview, he's no stranger on campus at KTH. Just before he went on stage, I asked him what Sweden has to offer the American scientific community. There are a number of uh, areas in which uh, Sweden uh, is one of the leading countries in scientific research that goes from uh, medical research to different aspects of engineering, to telecommunications, to some areas of manufacturing. So I think uh, student, Sweden has a number of things to offer to the U.S. Uh, for students from the U.S. and researchers to come here and to collaborate in new and exciting areas, uh, to have uh, interactions that are regionally based where American scientists can get exposure to activities in the broader Scandinavian region and in Europe. And also, Sweden is a very advanced country and it's often ranked quite highly uh, uh, as an innovator of new scientific methods, tools, and processes. And in the increasing, increasingly globalized world, uh, Americans have a lot to gain through collaborations with all countries, including in particular with Sweden. Now, we like to believe that for a small country, we're among the best in certain research fields. Are, are we entitled to have that view here in Sweden? Absolutely. Being a small country, being any small country, one cannot try to do everything. And Sweden uh, does a number of things that are uh, uh, very well, very well thought out. And a uh, number of scientific activities that are highly regarded on a global scale and uh, this is an area where many American institutions have collaborations um, of varying degrees. And I have personally benefited from some of these collaborations during my scientific career. You were a guest professor here at KTH uh, a few years back and, and received an honorary doctorate from us in 2006. How does it feel to be back here on campus? Oh, wonderful. Stockholm uh, is a beautiful city. And we have uh, many colleagues and many wonderful memories of our stay here in the 1990s. Uh, my first trip to Sweden was in 1983. I spent a month here at uh, KTH and I've visited here many times in the past as well as other parts of Sweden. And uh, it's always nice to come back to Stockholm and to KTH. How does KTH measure up in comparison with American universities and research institutes? What are, what are our strongest selling points in attracting researchers and professors and graduate students to come here from the United States? KTH has had a long uh, and distinguished history in um, many areas of science and engineering. It's a, it's a leading technical university uh, among technical universities in Europe. It's uh, one of the key uh, players in many areas of research in science and engineering. Uh, on a global scale. Uh, this goes back to the early part of uh, the first half of 1900s. Um, uh, Weibull statistics, which is very widely used uh, in, um, um, in many branches of engineering and sciences. Uh, Weibull is from uh, Stockholm. Uh, there are uh, other fields like material science uh, where Sweden is very well known, uh, manufacturing, uh, materials manufacturing, paper technology, uh, communications, um, many branches of mechanical engineering, automotive technology. Uh, so there are so many different areas where Stu Sweden is very well known. And more recently with the integration of engineering with biological sciences and medicine, uh, Sweden continues to attract the attention of key players in that field as well. Uh, you mentioned in that answer, several of our research platforms. We've organized KTH research into five strategic research platforms, uh, medical and biomedical technology, transport, materials, ICT, and energy. Is that the right approach for a university like this, to be cutting across our, our school organization with this new platform structure? 
I think one needs to have uh, uh, both approaches, uh, fostering individual scholarship where individual professors have an opportunity uh, to uh, excel in whatever their fields of pursuits are on a global scale. At the same time, the, in, the important thing about having platforms or what we call in the US as centers uh, or centers of excellence in select areas, the advantage of having a platform approach is that you bring together people from very different fields who work together on a common area which may be beyond the reach or scope or expertise of any one individual or one department. And this provides an opportunity to unify uh, different perspectives from the same institution and perhaps across institutions so that you can address challenges, major problems and grand challenges in a coherent way as an institution, um, more so than what an individual faculty member can do. Thank you very much. Thank you.